There has been so much dirty money flowing into politicians to cause them to create these roadblocks, these obstacles to the infrastructure bill. And we want to break down a few different forms of that's come in. It is just all throughout the, 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 the agenda of Joe Biden, um, including by the way, on the recent troubles in getting uh, some sort of voting rights bill passed. So the uh, accountable.us watchdog group, they have tracked down and identified eight major corporations that signed a letter back in July calling for the passage of the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. Well, that sounds great, right? Well, they haven't exactly put their money where their BICs were because they've collectively donated $164,500 to GOP senators who all but one voted to not allow debate on this measure. The companies include household names like Amazon, Dell, and Facebook. So Amazon, Dell, and Facebook were totally in favor of democracy and all that. But they threw their money into people who not only have filibustered every single voting rights bill, but were obviously always going to filibuster every single voting rights bill. And so why did they do it? Well, it makes them look good temporarily when they write things like, We need federal protections to safeguard this fundamental right for all Americans. And let me write out a check to like Thune or whatever. Last Congress, House of Representatives passed the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act. We support the ongoing work. Okay, here's a check to Mitch McConnell. I'm gonna, oh, Ted Cruz, you need some money? Okay, there you go, bada boom. Um, And that's what they did, Brett. So they say one thing, but their money goes in the opposite direction. Yes, politics is discourse in the service of power. And so they select their discourse in a way that will allow them to achieve more power. And yeah. we are all familiar with this, where they they want to be in the news saying we support uh, voting rights because it makes them feel good and stuff. But they still need a whole bunch of other things to happen, and they don't want to alienate some folks that might be in power someday. So they pay those people large amounts of money in order to have their ear and hold their ear. Yep. That's it. And most yep. of these companies are fine with any kind of uh, lip service. And most politicians are happy with giving lip service to the American people and making them feel like their best interests are being held near and dear. And in all fairness, most politicians right now, when we look, when we look at the bipartisan infrastructure bill and specifically also the, the budget bill, like 96% of Democrats are, are for all the things we've listed. Mm-hmm. It's just a few holdouts. And so because of so, you know, but when it comes down to it, most of these com- companies are they're fine. They're happy to. And a lot of their PR people and the folks that run them that live in major cities and in very blue states are fine with supporting a lot of the culture issues and yeah. in rights issues, uh, except when it comes to if that would translate to those corporations. Um, paying their fair share in taxes and the individuals who make a lot of money in them paying their fair share in taxes. That's why you see even when the Republicans are in power, the only thing they pass is uh, uh, judges in the approval process and uh, to help with regulations for businesses. And then they also pass a new tax code that allows the rich to pay less. Yep, and uh, while this was filibustered, I will remind you as I always uh, have, uh, those two things that Brett just identified cannot be filibustered. Uh, both of them can be, well, there's a carve out for judges and they can fit in their tax cuts into reconciliation. So um, when you are told to fear what the right wing would do uh, with no filibuster, understand that they already don't have a filibuster for the only things they care about. Right. Uh, by the way, I wanna give you examples of a couple of these things. So uh, Dell Technologies, whose founder Michael Dell has spoken out against proposed voting restrictions, donated $38,500, by half a Maserati with that, uh, to Senate Republicans since January. Amazon has donated 22500 But look at that, how much time do they spend demonizing Bezos and Amazon and he's still shoveling money at them? Why is that? Is it possible that the what both of them are saying publicly don't actually represent their interests? Perhaps Facebook has donated 26,500 to Senate Republican reelection campaigns. How is that legal that Facebook, like if you took $26,500, put it in a burlap sack and scrawled a dollar sign on it with a Sharpie, they would throw you in jail for the rest of your life. But if you send it via the regular, you know, the avenues, that's perfectly fine. And you know what's so amazing about this is, and makes it to me even more clearly bribery is virtually every single one of these politicians is a multi multi millionaire. They could afford 
to pay for their campaigns if they wanted to. Um, they don't have to when they're given the money anyway. It takes the place of the money they'd have to spend. I mean, we expect if you run for state representative, you're gonna be taking out loans. You're gonna be asking your family, your money, the money of your social circle is gonna go into that. But instead they get it replaced by others, but you shouldn't call it a bribe. Facebook didn't hand over that money to protect themselves or their interest to stop tax cuts or stop tax increases from happening. Amazon has no interests economically in this. They just love democracy and wanna be a part of the process. But we stupidly as a people allow this to happen. We are totally fine with bribes like this that are having obvious effects on the passage of certain types of legislation and the blocking of others. Yep. There is other corruption as well, by the way. So Senator Kirsten Cinema, I saw this tweet going around, this is a fun one. Collecting money from firms opposed to Democrats major labor, labor bill, again, Collecting money, not being bribed. But anyway, uh, a lot of the um, uh, the MLM, the um, uh, was it multi-level marketing, mm-hmm. multi-level marketing, right? Those yes. companies are uh, very much invested in this whole process. So the Political Action Committee, uh, associated with AltaCore, the parent entity of the health, home, and beauty company Amway, gave twenty five hundred dollars to Kirsten Cinema back in late June. As did the pack for Isagenics, I think it is, an Arizona-based business that sells nutrition, wellness, and personal care products. Uh, by the way, my producer makes a note that Altacor is actually owned by the DeVos family. That's a nice little yeah. crossover. That's a bold crossover uh, hit. Uh, New Skin Enterprises, another personal care and beauty company, gave $2,500 to her, as did blah, 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 and blah, 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 tons of them. And um, <laughs> what's amazing, Cinema is the only federal lawmaker that Isagenics and New Skin Packs have given to this year. Well, why why her in particular? Is it because you only need one no vote on certain things? Is it because, man, we've identified a way to say, like they already buy these people so cheap, but now they only need to buy one. It's, this is the one that I, it's like a not the onion. These are pyramid <laughs> schemes. This is the only reason that Herbalife has herbs affiliated with it is because otherwise it would literally just be a pyramid scheme. Mm -hmm. But the whole thing, these are companies that the only way they work is if you keep signing people up for it. There's documentaries about it, about how these are just straight up scams. And there is no person in Congress who besides Marjorie Taylor Greene and maybe Lauren Boebert, who Mm -hmm. I would be more like if you told me they were doing it, I would say absolutely 100%. Then Kirsten Cinema, she would yeah. post, you can see on her Instagram, her like, her like, I'm a girl boss and here's my moisturizing routine. And if you buy five samples, it's just samples, you can join this amazing team to market to more and more people. But yeah. it's, that's it. And that encapsulates who she is as a person. Someone who's always selling you on some BS version of her that isn't true. Because the only thing true about her is she's willing to sell based on whatever person paid her to sell yeah. some BS version of herself. You're exactly right. And by the way, um, let's let's talk about why. So as I was saying, why are they doing this? Producer Sophie was bolding and enlarging the reference to the PRO Act in her document. So. Yeah, I'll talk about it. I was going to talk about it. The companies face an existential threat from the PRO Act, which would make it more difficult to classify workers as independent contractors. According to one industry source, the bills become the driving issue since Democrats took control of the White House and both chambers of Congress. And cinema is one of, if not the only, Democratic allies in the Senate. So what's interesting about that is generally when you think about the PRO Act and the opposition to these sorts of pieces of legislation, trying to make sure that you can keep um, independent contractors as part of your business model, you think of things like Uber, uh, Lyft, Grubhub, all those sorts of things. But apparently it's actually pretty big in these MLM people as well. I mean, they are functionally employees for these companies, but they're also pitched as being independent entrepreneurs, even though they're all working for this one company. So sure, why wouldn't they throw some of the you know the huge amounts of money that they have into this? And and it's so like think about it. We're not talking about millions of dollars. They're giving twenty five hundred dollars. That's it. There's a few of them. Sure, that's nothing. That's like no money whatsoever. But you don't think that that's enough to get Curse of Cinema to do what you want, dude? 
There's nothing more telling than the fact that what she does, what she teaches at Arizona State University is fundraising. It's fundraising. That's it. Yeah. She's a fundraiser and she goes where the money is because it funds whatever operation she's into. Yeah. Period. Crazy. From her Instagram, you get the impression she's a fundraiser. Oh, I've got a ring and I'm drinking wine and everything. But no, it's it's mostly the funds at the end of the day. Okay, we're gonna take our second. <laughs> yes to Rose, no to your wages. Anyway. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.